Hello friends, so today's video is going to be a list of books that are adult fantasy that actually have adult characters. So this is kind of a companion video to another I did recently of books that if we had a formal new adult age range, I think those books would fit nicely within. These are books that have characters that are adults, that have adult problems, that go through things that I think if you're a little bit older than maybe, you know, 25, that you're gonna be like, where are the grownups? And you're gonna see these characters and you're gonna be like, there they are. The criteria I had for these books is these characters needed to have their own perspectives and their perspectives needed to be one of the main perspectives of the story. It couldn't be an off to the side character that just shows up here and there. It needed to be one of the main characters, if not the main character. That said, kicking off the list, the first one would be the Sword of Kaigen. This is a story that is so strange when you first get into it because I have said before, it almost has a CW superhero show feeling to aspects of it. And you do have this youthful character that is one of the main perspectives and you're with them for a while. You also though have one of the perspectives as this character's mother. And that is the reason that I'm bringing this into the picture. The story has a more innocent feel at the beginning. And then when things really start to transpire that are more negative in nature, those things are really heavy and I think there's a lot of adults, if you've read it, you know, there's a lot of adults that feel really emotional and really taxed by a lot of what's explored. And it's through this mother character in the book that you're gonna see a lot of that. Not every one of the characters on this list am I mentioning because of the fact that they're a parent, but that is something that I think a lot of people who are a little bit older are going to connect with a lot. This woman, is constantly thinking about how society, how it is and how her children fit into that. And she's thinking about her own personal principles. And some of those principles go against society because you do see a lot of propaganda. You see what happens when people kind of express themselves in ways that isn't necessarily allowed or encouraged. And even though she has this fighter spirit within her and she sees it in her children, she has to ask herself, do I encourage that? in my children or do I ask them not to pursue that way of thinking and that way of expressing themselves because it could mean them being harmed. It could put them in danger. And just thinking about it, it's something that I feel like you don't feel until you're older and you, you see whether it's your children or nieces and nephews or if you're a teacher and you think about your students, that feeling of, oh, I have to protect these. Oh my gosh, I'm getting emotional talking about it. But like you have to, you don't, you just want them to be safe. You just want your children or you want young people to be okay, but you also want them to fight for what would make society better. And through this character, you see that done so well. You also see other things involving her marriage, what she wanted for her life, what she could have chosen for her life, the expectations that were placed on her when she was young by her parents on top of what was placed on her by society and having to kind of put certain things to sacrifice certain things that she wanted for herself for these other individuals, these other people that in stories sometimes you see characters, especially there's that trope with younger people where their parents are just not there so they don't have to think about other people, but that you don't get that luxury. When you're an adult, you think about other people, whether it's your children, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your parents, and what you have to sacrifice in order to find that balance. It's done so well in Sword of Kaigen. Next up, we have the Stormlight Archive and specifically Dalinar. So what is really great about an older character like Dalinar is that they have a past and they're having to deal with what they've done. And what's really interesting about this reading experience is that when you meet Dalinar, where he is in present day, you form your own opinions about him. You meet him where he is and where he is currently is a person that seems like a pretty good guy. You understand that he was involved in the military before and there's gonna be a past there, but he really wants to unite people. He stands by his ideals. He's very much rooted in his principles and you respect that. And then you see how he was in the past and then it sort of changes how you view him. On top of that, it changes how you view interactions that he's had because sometimes you get frustrated for the guy. You're like, I don't understand. Look, he's clearly genuine in this. How many things does he have to do to prove to you that he's sincere? And these other characters are like, yeah, but I know your reputation. So no, I'm not, I'm not allying myself with you. And you're like, what's it gonna take? And then you read later and you're like, oh. And that makes for a really interesting reading experience. Whereas with a younger character, you're not really gonna get that. What, 15 years ago, they were five. In it, 
does bring up a lot of questions about how much are we willing to forgive? How much can a person change? And Dalinar has to ask himself that too, and he has to really grapple with that. Next up, and completely switching gears here, we have Paladin's Grace. This is a fantasy romance story. Both of the main characters, the lady of the story and the man of the story, are both adults, and they have baggage, and they have pasts. The woman is somebody who has had a very bad relationship in the past, and it was actually one of the few times in a story that you essentially explore a character who has been through a divorce. And some of the aspects of her divorce are things that a lot of people, regardless of whether you're a woman like her or not, a lot of the experiences that she had in her past are things that a lot of people are going to relate to and then trying to come away from that and trying to find your independence again, trying to be on your own two feet, and then trying to also on top of all of that learn to trust again is something I know a lot of people can relate to. And then the other character is someone who has a lot of people that he feels it is really important for him to be there for. And as a result, he cannot 100% give himself to somebody that he is involved with romantically because there are other people relying on him. And that's something that you just don't see as often with younger characters in books. In his case, the people that are relying on him are essentially his brethren. There are people that he has gone through things with. The fantastical aspects of the story is that he was a paladin for a god and this god died. And so the remnants of the god's power that was within all of the paladins has resulted in some of them going through some things that were really awful. Some of them did not make it. The few that did struggle with PTSD. And that is the reason that he feels he needs to be there for them. They all kind of help each other and they're there for each other. And as you get older, you're going to find that there are people in your life that you you feel, I have to help take care of this person. I have to be there for this person. And so you see these two characters, they do care about each other, but they also have all these other things that play a role in who they are and how they come to each other. And there's the additional fact that this is fantasy romance with slightly older characters. And when you are slightly older and you're coming into relationships, it's very different than the kinds of relationships you usually see in fantasy, which is this person meets this person, they go on an adventure or they have a goal that they are trying to get toward together and they fall up, they fall in love along the way. And that's just not how it is for most people. So it's great that within, an, within a fantasy story, you're seeing a fairly realistic exploration of basically, as cheesy as it sounds, finding love again <laughs> in your adult years. Next up, we have The Art of Prophecy. And this is one where one of the main perspectives is actually the mentor character. I loved this character. She's actually quite a bit older. So on top of being an adult, she's actually an elderly woman. And she is one of the coolest characters. She is somebody who still, you do not want to mess with her. I loved this character. She is a no-nonsense kind of lady. And she also has a past. She has things that are alluded to throughout the story that as you're reading, you start to understand her and why she is the way she is and why she treats certain people the way she does and why she have a, has a soft spot for certain people. And you're like, oh my goodness. And it just, I couldn't get enough of her. I loved her so much. But also, <laughs> even if you aren't her age, if you're a younger person, but you know, you're an adult, or maybe you're not, maybe you're a teenager and you just have this certain thing inside you where you're like, I'm pretty done with people, you know? Like, I like people, but I also want to be at home by myself. And I just don't want to be around anyone else. If you kind of have that inside you and you're like, I guess I'm an old person, you know? Like, I'm like, I have all the friends I need and I'm good, <laughs> which I don't, you know, 100% truly feel that way. But I feel like a lot of us at some point kind of get to a point where we're like, I'm, I'm pretty good. You know, I am I know who I am. I know what I like. I know who I like. And I don't really want to have to deal with a lot of change. And you just tell yourself, I guess I'm old. She is going to represent you in that way because she's like that. She's like, I don't want to do this anymore. But I feel like I have to. And just that, ah, man, it's very relatable. The last one that I'll mention for today would be the fifth season. This is one that has very, very heavy themes and a lot of them have to do with the trauma that is experienced as a result of a society that puts more respect and love and care into certain people than others. And that's putting it lightly. And on top of that, what happens when you are a member of a group of people that is mistreated and you have children? 
I think the second book in particular, one of the themes that's done really, really well is you want to be loving towards your children. You want to care for them. You want to provide them with a happy life, but you also understand that you can't afford to let them basically be soft. You can't afford for them to exist within this bubble because as soon as they get into the real world, it is going to be crushed and they will not be ready and they will likely face a lot of danger if they are not prepared. And so there's this really, really tragic theme within the story of you kind of harden yourself and you force yourself to be hard on your children because you know that the world is going to be hard on them and you don't want them to suffer. You don't want them to be unprepared. And that is such a difficult theme. And I feel like one that only really a lot of adults are going to fully comprehend. And that struggle for the parent, like you want, you want nothing more than for your children to be happy and for them to be safe. But by being really, really sweet and loving and caring to them, you feel like you aren't allowing for them to be safe. That's it for some books that have adult main characters and that really explore a lot of themes that a lot of adults can connect with, can relate to. If you have your own suggestions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And if you'd like me to do another video like this, I would happily do so. But anyway, thanks so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.